And so welcome to our story today. Our story today is going to be a very beautiful story and we are going to travel back in time to the old, old days. Eh? You know those days when uh, weapons were just uh, bows and arrows and swords. Eh? Those days when the fastest car or vehicle was not a Bugatti. Eh -eh. Those days when the fastest vehicle was a horse. And those days when I, I maybe I tend to believe uh, the donkeys were what were used as lorries because they would, they would carry a lot of heavy loads and stuff. And so those days when we didn't even have cameras, eh? you know these days there's a, uh, cameras are everywhere. Phones have cameras. I'm using a camera right now to speak to you. Those days uh, they had to paint pictures. Ah, These were old, good old days. And we thank God that he has led us this far up to this day. So during those days, there lived a very powerful king. He was a warrior. A powerful king who was a warrior and he used to lead his people to battle. You know, uh, in the old days, people would go to battle to defend their kingdom. A kingdom was an area of land where people lived and they built their, uh, their kingdom. It was like a country uh, in, in, the, in the current language. So the king was like the president of that country and it was a vast country, very big. And so this king was a powerful warrior. He would go to battle, win wars, and uh, he would lead his people very well. And he was not only a king to lead, he, was, he also fought in the battle. So people loved him. They uh, were excited about his uh, kingship, how he would uh, be very participative even when it came to defending the kingdom. And so one day, unfortunately, as they went to battle, ah, guess what happened? The king was attacked by a warrior from a warring community. And he was injured very fatally so because his he lost his leg and one of his eyes. So he became a king who did not have one eye and one leg. It was, uh, it was not a very good thing for the king, but the people still loved him. Ah, the people still uh, were excited about him. He did a very good job to uh, actually defend the kingdom. So what did the people do? They said the king should continue ruling them even though he had one eye and one leg. It went on for a period of time. And so one day as the king was walking in the palace, this is what happened. He noticed that in the palace, in the hallway, there were uh, pictures that were uh, all lined up on the walls. And those pictures, they... They, they, had, they had the pictures of, they, they were portraits of the previous kings, the kings who ruled before him. And these were his ancestors, people who were there before him. And he was so excited. And he wondered, how would uh, my children remember me or my, the prosperity, my prosperity, how would they remember me after I am gone? And so he thought it was wise that his uh, portrait also featured on the hallway. And so he announced in the kingdom, it called all the, uh, the, the, the painters and told them, we need, uh, you need to make one portrait of the king. But remember, our king had, had one eye and one leg. And so he ordered. <laughs> now, when the king orders, this is not the chief. Eh? It is not um, your usual guy there ordering. This is the king. He has authority. He can even say, this guy should be uh, thrown into jail, and he's thrown into jail. So the king ordered that the portrait should be as beautiful as possible. It should look as beautiful as The king should appear, um, uh, let, let us use handsome, eh? <laughs> let us use handsome. The king should be as handsome as possible so that uh, everybody who will see the king after will appreciate that they once lived a powerful and very uh, good king in the kingdom. So painters came all over the country. They were in, the, in their hundreds and thousands. And, and every time when they came and looked at the king, uh -uh, they said, mm -mm, Mimi, I, no, I'm not going to do this one. Because if I mess up, <laughs> this is dangerous. So um, everyone, every, every, every painter would turn down the offer. Kindly so and with a lot of humility, we've just discussed about authority. They would say, mm -mm, uh, King, we love you, but uh, sadly, I will not be able to paint this portrait for you. Ah. So the king um, 
after all, he, he could not force them to do it. He was a kind king. Remember, we said that. So, all of a sudden, someone raised their hand. They said, King, I think I can do one for you, and you will love it. You will love it. And the king said, you mean, you, yeah, yes, I, I can do one for you, and you will absolutely love it. And so the king gave him the go-ahead. Do that uh, portrait, and I will, we will come after, after you finish to see it. And so it was announced, and the guy took the job, went out, and took a very long time. Even people started to forget that there was a painting that was supposed to be done. But eventually he announced that he had finished the, the portrait and it was time to come and view the portrait. Wow. So people were gathered. People were actually uh, very curious and uh, they were anxious at the same time because they were not sure what would turn out. You know, the king could decide because one painter messed up, every other painter should be arrested. So uh, they decided, let us uh, wait, wait and see. And people lined up all the uh, powerful people in the kingdom, they came to see the portrait that this guy had done. And once the portrait was revealed, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. guess what? Uh -uh, you guessed. Once the portrait was revealed, everybody loved it. It was the best portrait. I know you expected us to say it was a bad one. No, it was the best portrait. People loved it and they were happy to see how the king was portrayed. You know how the king was portrayed? He was portrayed with, uh, on a horse. He was riding on a horse. And you know when you're riding on a horse, when you're facing like this, only you, people can only see one, one side. So he was riding on a horse. One of, on the side that his leg, he had the proper leg, was facing, the, uh, was facing the people. And then the other side that did not have a leg was on the other side. And for the eye, the king had a bow and an arrow. And so he was aiming the bow and the arrow, closing one eye. You got it. Ah, hey. So it was the best picture, and it was it showed the king as a very uh, as a warrior, as a powerful king, and everybody in the kingdom liked it. What do we want to learn from our story today? That sometimes in life, sometimes in life, and most of the times in life, we have. Uh, People who are, we face people who have various weaknesses. We face circumstances that are not the best that we would like, even as children. Sometimes we have parents who are very tough on us. Sometimes we feel they are not allowing us to go outside to play. They are not giving us the freedom we wanted. Sometimes even our friends, our siblings, they are uh, there. They, they are not very supportive. But on the flip side, if you look at it, they also are very important people in our lives. Our parents give us food. So our siblings, uh, sometimes they allow us to play with them and or even to use their things. So, it is the way we look at things that actually matters. All the other painters saw the king as a one-eyed, one-legged king. But this painter saw the king as a warrior who could ride a horse and even shoot an arrow and aim better with that one eye. And you know what? Jesus saw the same in us. And this is the most amazing thing. That Jesus saw the same in us, even in our weaknesses as children, even as, uh, as proud as we are, as, uh, as, as, as bad as we would, would be. Maybe sometimes we lie a bit. Sometimes we tell our parents uh, different things that we actually did not do and we say we did. Sometimes we fail as human beings. But Jesus loved us all the same. And he looked, at the, he looked to paint a better picture of us. And that's why he died on the cross. So that we, our picture could look at least more better. It could look better than the way we actually are. And that Jesus today is saying, come to him and, uh, and he will show you that love. He says this. There's a song we sing. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And he invites us to love everyone else, not assuming that they don't have weaknesses, but focusing on their strengths. And in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 3, it says, do, uh, don't do anything from selfish ambition, but consider others better than yourself. And that today is our story. And I hope that from now hence, you will consider others better than yourself 
and not focusing on their weaknesses, but on their strengths, even as Jesus focused on our strengths to become better. Shall we pray? Lord, we want to thank you because you didn't consider our weaknesses, but rather you used them to, be, to, to, to show your strength in us and also to use us in helping others in this world. We as little children want to trust you for, um, to, to love others, want, to, uh, want you to help us to be kind to others, be the good children that we are supposed to be. But we cannot do this without your help. We invite you to help us become good children who are going to be, uh, appreciate others and, and even focus on their strengths to build each other up. May your spirit and grace be upon us even as we listen to the sermon of today. May you be with us and speak to us in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. God bless us all.